Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve partition list or partition a linked list because we are given the head of a linked list and a particular value X and we wanna partition the list such that every single value that's less than X is on the left side, like over here, and every single value greater than or equal to X is on the right side of the list, like over here. So you see, in this case, this was our input linked list and the value that we were looking at was three. So we took every single node less than or or rather just less than three, right? And there were three nodes and then we put them on the left side and we took every value greater than or equal to three. So four, three and five and put them on the right side of the linked list. And there was one last thing we had to do with that. We had to preserve the original order. So there were three elements that were less than three and we had to put them in the new list in the particular order that they were given, right? So we had to do it in order. Similarly, for the values greater than or equal to three, we also had to preserve the original order. So it's four, three, five. So let me show you how to solve this problem in O of N time and constant space. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna iterate through every single element in the input list. If, you know, in this case, our x equals three, if a value is less than three, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the left list. I'm gonna create two different sub lists. If a value like four is greater than or equal to three, then I'm gonna add it to the right list. And at the end, we'll have all our less than values and the left list will have all our greater or equal to values here. And then at the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our left list and then connect it to the beginning of the right list. So this way we will have a new list that we partitioned and we'll preserve the original order of elements the way we want to and we'll be able to connect these two sublists left and right. So first value one is less than three, so I'm gonna add it to the left list. And now the next value we add to the left list is gonna be over here. So next we look at four, that's greater than or equal to three. So add it to the right sub list. We have three itself, which is greater than or equal to three. So we're gonna add it to the right list. The left list only has values that are strictly less than three. Next we have a two. So I'm gonna add that two to the left list. Now we have a five, the five is greater than three, greater than or equal to three. So now I'm gonna add it to the right list. And lastly, we have a two. So I'm gonna take that two and add it to the end of our left list. Now in reality, since the two was the last list in the node, we know that it had an extra pointer that was pointing at null and we didn't update it. So technically this list is ending in a null and we know we're gonna end up connecting it to the beginning over here. But what about this five? What's the next pointer of the five pointing at? Well, it was originally pointing at this two, right? So technically right now we have a list like this, right? So keep that in mind. So in reality, I'm gonna take this null, right? Instead of pointing at null, I want this node to point at the beginning of the right list. So this is a little more clean. So it's pointing at the right list. So now left is the start of our total list, right? So we start at left, we go here, we go here, we go here. Then we end up going all the way to this four, right? And then we go to three and then we go to five and look at this five. The five is technically still pointing at the two. So this kind of creates an infinite loop for us, even though uh, the picture is getting a little bit messy now. But so what I'm basically saying is since we know this five is going to be the last element in our list, we're gonna take its next pointer and end up setting it to. So now if you just wanna quickly look at what the actual list looks like. So this is the start, this is the end. So we have a one, the one goes to a two, that goes to a two. This two ends up going to this four, which goes to the three, which goes to the five. And the five you can see points at null over here. So this is the end of our list and this is going to be our output list. So this algorithm is actually not super complicated. Now let me show you how to code it up. So as with pretty much every single linked list problem, I'm going to need some dummy nodes because I just like doing dummy nodes. They're never really a requirement, but I think they make 
the code a little bit shorter and easier. So I'm going to have our left and right lists initially initialized at dummy nodes, basically just empty nodes that we create, but we're not actually going to include these in our resulting linked list. I'm also going to have tail variables, so left tail and right tail, which are always going to be pointing at the last node in our left and right list, so we can easily add an element to the end of each of these lists. And basically, I'm just going to iterate through the entire input list, so while the head is not null, I'm going to check, is that head value less than x, right? Because that's what we're really looking for. That's how we're partitioning this list. So if the head value is less than x, then we're going to be adding that head to the tail. So tail.next of the left list is going to have head inserted. And we also have to update the tail now. So the tail is going to be tail.next because we're just incrementing it one spot. So the next iteration of the loop, we can add the next node in the correct position. We're going to do the exact same thing, except now the else condition is if the value is greater than or equal to x, which we know then we're going to add it to the right sublist. So right tail dot next is now going to contain head and then we have to also update the tail. And regardless of what either of these conditions, which one executes, it doesn't matter. Either way, we're going to have to shift our head pointer. So head dot next is going to be head now. So by the end of it, we will have gone through every element, partitioned them into left and right sublists. Now, one thing we have to do is connect the list. So, so the left tail dot next is going to be the first, is going to point at the first node in the right list. So right dot next. We do right dot next because right itself is a dummy node. So right dot next is going to be the first real node in the right list. And we also have to terminate our list, meaning the last node has to point at null. So we know the last node in the list is right tail. So right tail dot next is going to be set to null. And now we will have our perfect partitioned linked list and we can return it, which is going to be left dot next because left itself is a dummy node. Left dot next will be the first node in our list. So there you go. You see it's a pretty efficient solution. Not a lot of code, but it's a definitely a, a solid linked list problem to get under your belt. And I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.